What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the newest super phone in Verizon's lineup, the Motorola Droid X. So let's start this review with what this phone is meant to do most and that is make phone calls and it does it extremely well. Call quality is crisp, clear, it sounded like a landline. I had no drop calls. Uh, there was no white noise or buzzing or clicking uh, on my end or the caller's other end. The speakerphone quality on this thing is fantastic. It is loud and works really well. And actually, I'll give you a quick demonstration of it. You can hear sort of just the quality of the speaker that Motorola put into this uh, is really just very nice. To hear your mailbox prompt in English, press 1. And that is probably the loudest speaker that I've seen on any sort of smartphone. And certainly, I've tested a, a fair share. So that is, definitely goes to the quality of the hardware that Motorola put into the Droid X. So if call quality was an issue for you, no need to worry. Uh, as far as the radio in here though, as far as the reception that it gets, uh, it doesn't get the best reception. I've tested many other Verizon phones in the exact same location uh, and had maybe between three and four bars of EVDO Reve service. Uh, with the Droid X here, I tend to hover between one and two. And not to say it can't hold on to a call, even by just holding one bar of 3G service here, I never experienced a drop call. Uh, but if you are in a fringe area, it's something that you're going to want to keep in mind. All right, so let's jump into probably the other most important thing about this phone, and that is its monster, monster 4.3 inch TFT screen uh, with a resolution of 480 by 854. Uh, which makes it one of the largest uh, phones now on the market. And the screen is just gorgeous. Uh, the resolution gives a bit of a taller resolution, so there's less scrolling through web pages. And I demonstrated this in a lot of other previous videos, uh, but it just works very well. The screen is bright, it's vibrant, it sort of shows what you're looking at and shows what you're looking at very well. Um, so if you're worried about scrolling through menus, you know, Android is very uh, menu based, so looking at you know, applications, you can now see more on one row, which will reduce your scrolling uh, as you go through uh, the menus. So the screen is absolutely gorgeous. It's bright, it's crisp, uh, text looks fantastic. It's very responsive to multi-touch, so when you're on the browser, if you need to do any pinching and zooming, uh, it'll work quite well for you. So I'll go ahead and jump to a web page right here and just give you a quick example. I will jump to uh, technobuffalo.com. And in case you're wondering or comparing this with other phones, I did do some head-to-heads with the iPhone 4 uh, and the Evo 4G. I'll put links to those uh, in the underbar and uh, annotations sort of right around here so you guys can see. All right, so let's go ahead and sort of keep jumping along here. Spec-wise, this thing is really spec to the gills uh, using Texas Instruments OMAP 3630 processor, uh, which clocks in at one gigahertz. So when you keep hearing one gigahertz processor, you've generally heard of Snapdragon, or Apple's A4, there certainly is a third entry, and this entry does not disappoint. It handles things very quickly. Multitasking works very well. It's a snap as far as how quickly it uh, loads content, loads programs and such. Uh, it just works very, very, very well. So you're not gonna have any sort of slowdown. And that's also due to the 512 megabytes of onboard RAM, uh, which is quite nice as well. So let's go ahead and sort of continue and talk about the rest of the specs here. Uh, it does have eight gigabytes of internal storage, uh, you can up that all the way up to, uh, I believe, 40 with a 32 gigabyte card, although 16 card will be included in here. Uh, it's got sort of the included things you'd expect, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, certainly 3G, GPS, and Bluetooth. Uh, the web browser is very good. Uh, certainly, I think it's sort of stock Android. Uh, works very, very well. I think Android's come a long way as far as web browsing, and they really have a very nice experience. Multi-touch, as I mentioned, is implemented really well here. So let me give you an example of what the web browser looks like. Uh, we'll jump on over to Techno Buffalo, like I tried to show before. Um, and it just looks smooth. Scrolling is very fast. The physics engine uh, seems to keep up with the pages. You don't get sort of that checker pattern that you get when you scroll through web pages very quickly. Uh, it just works really well. It's smooth. Multi-touch implementation certainly works. Uh, not present here, though, is Flash. Uh, no Flash content is going to be available uh, at launch on the Droid X, although Motorola and Verizon have said that Flash 10.1 uh, will be coming sometime in 2010, uh, in addition to Android 2.2 Froyo. So this is running 2.1, in case you're wondering. Uh, and speaking of running 2.1, it is not a stock 2.1. It's actually running a brand new updated version of Moto Blur. Now, don't cringe. If you've seen other Moto Blur phones, uh, you're probably going to know that Moto Blur has looked cartoony. It's been sort of a clumsy implementation. 
Uh, and I, I should specify that Moto Blur is actually a skin that sits on top of Android. Well, the new Moto Blur is fantastic. It's unobtrusive and it adds to where it needs to be added. Uh, for instance, you get these new icons across the bottom to jump to your phone, your contacts, or your programs. Uh, really works quite well to go through your home screens. You get a new sort of array at the bottom. You can jump to each. You can see those sort of dots help you pick where you want to go. Uh, they've added a ton of really helpful widgets here as well. Uh, you can see that I've got sort of some indications here on or off. Uh, weather. I've got mail and calendar and search. And a new, just such a ton of new icons which make it a very uh, easy program and easy uh, skin to navigate through. Now, Moto Blur, as you see here, comes with a lot of widgets, but there are a ton more. Let me just show you very quickly what some of those widgets are. Bluetooth, toggle, calendar, GPS. You can sort of see that there are quite a few here uh, to choose from. So let's talk about design. You're looking at a screen this big, you know that you're going to be dealing with a large phone. Now it's the closest competitor, the only phone we can even compare this to with a similar screen, uh, is going to be the HTC Evo 4G, which is by no means a small phone. However, when you pull in the Evo next to the Droid X, uh, the Evo looks downright small. Uh, the Droid X is a large phone. You can see if I put them right next to each other, sort of lined up at the bottom, there is definitely a difference in size. Uh, when you stack them on top of each other, you can see that there's a bit of a difference there as well. It's got that bit of a hump for the camera. Now, that's not to say this is going to be a giant phone and won't be able to fit in your pocket. Certainly, it is pocketable. Uh, but for all of you skinny jean emo kids out there, uh, you're definitely going to be able to notice a very, very uh, square or rectangle looking uh, package in your pocket. Uh, something to keep in mind. Now that being said, I don't mind the design. Uh, the hump on the back actually makes it nice to hold when you're making a phone call. It's a spot to sort of rest your finger. Uh, the camera quality works fantastic. It's got an 8 megapixel sensor with dual LED flash. Video, it shoots at 720p, and it really is 720p. The microphones that are in there do a very nice job of sort of limiting background noise, and the audio fidelity seems to be very good, especially for a camera phone. So if you're out and recording some video, uh, you can leave your flip at home, and you can just rely on your Droid X, because it really just does a, a overall very fantastic job. Uh, in conclusion, I've been really impressed with the Droid X. I haven't been the biggest fan of capacitor buttons on phones. I like that these are actually physical buttons that you can touch. Uh, the build quality feels really, really, really good. And I'm shocked to say that I like Moto Blur. Uh, I was never a big fan of it in the past, but the new implementation is really solid and well done. So if you're looking for a super phone on Verizon's network, look no farther than the Droid X. It really is a great option. It certainly reigns uh, as the king of the hill in the carrier's lineup. But if you don't want a 4.3 inch phone, you want a more traditional screen size, uh, the Droid Incredible is similarly spec, uh, built by HTC, running HTC Sense UI, uh, which is another great skin on top of Android. So there are two really good options for Android in Verizon's lineup, not to mention the original Droid. Uh, so if you're looking for Android and your carrier is Verizon, you have a ton of fantastic choices. If you don't mind the size, you're not going to go wrong with the Droid X. On a 1 to 5 scale, uh, I give it a very, very, very solid uh, 4.75 when it finally gets Android 2.2 and flash content that may actually bump it up to a 5. This is close to a perfect phone uh, as there is. Anyway guys, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out the website for all your exclusive tech content. Check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.